With astronauts constantly aboard the International Space Station, performing science, doing chores, enjoying the out-of-this-world views, what happens when something breaks, or their oxygen starts to run low? What happens if there's too much trash on the station? They can't exactly go on a quick supply run to the grocery store. Instead, space agencies have developed automated cargo ships to send them the supplies. The first of these was the Russian Progress cargo freighter. Since January of 1978, these spacecraft have been sending food and equipment to outposts such as Salyut, Mir, and the ISS. If you haven't already, be sure to subscribe and give this video a thumbs up. It really helps to support this channel and lets me know what topics you guys are interested in. You can also hit the notification bell to be alerted when Orbital Velocity releases a new video. Thank you so much. For nearly as long as space stations have been around, there has been a need to resupply them. Progress was the first space freighter designed and built for the sole purpose of topping off food, water, and fuel for off-world outposts. The first space station this expendable freighter serviced was Salyut 6, which was also the first outpost with more than one docking port. Progress vehicles are derived from the crewed Soyuz spacecraft and are also launched on the Soyuz rocket. It has a propulsion module, a refueling module, and a cargo module. However, these three sections aren't designed to separate during re-entry like the Soyuz spacecraft, as Progress is completely expendable. Overall, the vehicle is 7.2 meters long and 2.7 meters wide. Its solar panel wingspan is about 10.6 meters. The spacecraft has a launch mass of between 7,000 and 7,250 kilograms. It can carry a maximum of about 2,400 kilograms of supplies, consumables, and experiments to an outpost. The cargo module is similar to the Soyuz orbital module. It has a docking port up front with equipment to support autonomous rendezvous and docking. It holds pressurized cargo including experiments, supplies, and sometimes most importantly, fresh fruit. It has a total of about 6 cubic meters of cargo space and can hold about 1,700 kilograms. This part is also sometimes used for remote experiments after its mission at a station is completed, such as in 1993 when Progress M15 was used to deploy a 20 meter solar mirror shortly after departing the Mir space station. The cargo module is typically loaded with trash and no longer needed equipment after its supplies are removed. These will burn up in Earth's atmosphere at the end of the Progress's mission. The refueling module replaces the descent module of the Soyuz spacecraft as no people return in this vehicle. As such, unnecessary equipment such as heat shields, parachutes, and explosives that allow for tri-module separation are removed, saving weight. This section can carry a maximum of 1,740 kilograms of fuel, oxygen, and water to space stations depending on how much is in the cargo module. The propulsion module is used during the rendezvous sequence as well as for deorbiting the vehicle at the end of its mission. While docked to a space station, it can help raise the outpost's orbit if needed, and in the case of the Mir space station in 2001, be used to safely dispose of an orbiting outpost. Like Soyuz, this part contains instruments for temperature control and equipment for communications, power, and telemetry. Also like Soyuz, Progress as a whole has been upgraded since the first models in the 1970s. It is currently in its fifth major revision, Progress MS. Some of these new improvements include enhanced redundancy for various systems, improved micrometeoroid debris protection, a digital radio, and enhanced TV cameras for docking. Additionally, a new docking navigation system was installed, KERS NA, which uses only one rendezvous antenna and less power. The old system, KERS A, used five antennas. As of 2020, nearly 170 of these spacecraft have resupplied the Salyut 6, Salyut 7, Mir, and International Space Stations. Special variations have even brought small space station modules to the ISS, Piers and Poisk, and are expected to do so in the near future with the Russian Prechelm module. Progress cargo ships launch from Baikonur Cosmodrome in Kazakhstan using the Soyuz launcher. It can arrive at a space station in as little as three hours and remain attached for up to seven months. The first cargo spacecraft to dock with the ISS was Progress M13. It docked to the Zvezda service module on August 8, 2000, and left on November 1st of that same year to make way for the first permanent ISS crew, Expedition 1, which docked a day later at the same location. At the end of every Progress's mission, the spacecraft is commanded to deorbit and burn up, usually over the South Pacific Ocean. In the Progress freighter's 40-year history, only three have failed to reach their destination. In August 2011, Progress M12M failed to reach orbit after the Soyuz rocket's third stage cut out before entering orbit. Progress M27M lost control and ran out of fuel after a collision between it and the third stage of the carrier booster in May of 2015. And finally, in December 2016, Progress MS-04 failed to reach orbit after a premature shutdown of the carrier rocket's third stage. In all of these cases, the fault was not in the spacecraft itself, but in the booster carrying it to space. 
There were also several cases of spacecraft being unable to redock to an outpost following its initial docking. The only major non-launch related incident came in 1997. While Progress spacecraft generally automatically dock to space stations, there is a capability aboard the station for the crew to take manual control in the event of an emergency. On June 24, 1997, during a test of this manual docking system, the Mir station crew made a miscalculation in the speed and distance Progress M34 was from the outpost. As such, the freighter collided with Mir, damaging the Spectre module, causing it to depressurize. The crew was able to seal off the module from the rest of Mir, however, Spectre was never occupied again. Despite decades of service, the Progress spacecraft's time sending supplies to space stations could come to an end within the next 10 years. Russia is currently looking to replace the storied cargo craft with an unpiloted version of the country's next crewed spacecraft called Orel. However, its development is years behind schedule and is currently expected to see flight in a crewed variant as early as the middle of the 2020s. What do you think of the Progress spacecraft? And what is your favorite Progress mission? Let me know in the comments below. If you haven't already, please like and share this video, subscribe to the channel and hit the notification bell, and follow Orbital Velocity on Twitter and Facebook. You can also head over to orbital-velocity.com for even more space-related content, including a monthly newsletter called The Space Capsule. Links are in the description below. Thanks for watching, and until next time, at Astra.